Perhaps nothing is as important to the function of an ERP system as the proper setup of the general ledger. In this regard, MAS-90 and MAS-200 definitely follow the rule as opposed to the exception. Whether you're setting up the system from scratch or just need your system to run more efficiently, understanding the functionality of the parameter settings in the general ledger options is paramount. To navigate to these settings, simply select Modules, General Ledger, Setup Folder, and of course General Ledger Options. We use General Ledger Options to tailor the system parameters to the needs of our individual company. The window consists of four tabs, Main, Entry, Budget, and Terminology. Let's start with the Main tab. The Main tab includes options primarily pertaining to new account creation, history retention, and defining roll-up types, which begins the process of creating roll-up levels not coded in your general ledger chart of accounts. We discuss those later. The first two sections, Accounts and On-the-Fly Additions, deal with account creation. Auto-create when all segments are valid affects how accounts are automatically generated on the fly in other modules, that is to say modules other than the general ledger. Selecting yes here will allow the system to automatically create accounts when a valid combination of main account and sub account values are entered but the account does not exist. The account is then automatically created without any notification to the user. Select no to prevent the system from automatically creating accounts even though the main account slash sub account combination entered is valid. If no is selected, all accounts must be created in either account maintenance, copy accounts as accessed from the main account maintenance or sub account maintenance options, or the generate account options on the general ledger utilities menu. Selecting prompt the most versatile of the three, similar to the yes option, allows the system to automatically create accounts when a valid combination of main account and sub account values are entered but the account does not exist. However, you are prompted via the account entry window which automatically appears giving you the option to automatically create the account or not. The on the fly addition section affects how main accounts and sub accounts are automatically generated on the fly in the general ledger module itself. Selecting the first checkbox which relates to main accounts allows on the fly entry of a new main account in general ledger task including account maintenance, general journal entry, recurring journal entry, transaction journal entry, allocation entry, and budget revision entry. When a new account value is entered the account entry window appears and you can create the main account on the fly. Clear this checkbox to restrict the entry of new main accounts to main account maintenance tasks only. Selecting the second checkbox related to sub accounts allows on the fly entry of new sub accounts in general ledger tasks including once again account maintenance general journal entry, recurring journal entry, transaction journal entry, allocation entry, and budget revision entry. When a new sub account value is entered, the account entry window appears and you can create a new sub account on the fly. Once again, clear this checkbox to prevent new sub accounts from being created on the fly in those tasks and to restrict their creation to the sub account maintenance task only. The general ledger also gives me the ability to track accounts in our chart. If we choose to track accounts, we can track optionally deletion of existing accounts, addition of new accounts, changes to existing accounts, and do all of this in summary. While summary tracks the accounts being changed, who changed them, and when they changed them, additional detail can be tracked including which fields were changed, what are the new values, and what were the existing values that were changed. 
We use the retained earnings account field to enter the account number that represents the owner's equity share in the business. Click the lookup button to list all account numbers available. Automatic account creation or on the fly account creation are not available at this field. The account entered at this field must exist in the general ledger account file. The retained earnings account must be an equity type account. Income and expense accounts are closed out to this account at year's end and the year end account balance is carried over to the next year's profit slash loss balance. If you change the retained earnings account at this field, the amount in the original retained earnings account is moved to the updated retained earnings account for each fiscal year. However, amounts posted by way of journal entry to a retained earnings account are not moved. These amounts remain in the retained earnings account for which the journal entry was created. Moving to the roll-up section, perhaps a better name for the roll-up types would be roll-up categories. At the roll-up type field, we enter roll-up types or category descriptions. These roll-up types are then used to create roll-up categories not coded in your chart of accounts. Each type defined appears as a field in main account maintenance on the setup menu, account maintenance on the main account menu, as well as filter criterion on the selection grid of most reports. Codes for each type types such as region or location or manager stores that kind of thing. Codes for each one of these types must be defined in roll-up code maintenance. We discussed this subject in detail in another one of our online lessons. The next two fields indicate the current fiscal year and period being used by the module. Period end processing and fiscal year processing respectfully will update these two fields. The final section miscellaneous indicates that you can control the years to retain general ledger history. That can be as low as 1 and as high as 99. I caution against using 1 because my history of 5 years being retained actually means only 4 years of history are being retained. The fifth year is the current year being processed. So if you indicate two, you're only indicating one year of history retention and the current year being processed. So you want to be careful when you use something lower than two uh, as a number in this field. Finally, if you indicate that you would like to integrate the general ledger with the bank reconciliation module by selecting this option, you then make the bank reconciliation code uh, file available to general ledger transactions when posted through transaction journal entry. We will explore that transactional relationship later in other lessons. Batch processing, or as I like to call it, data entry batch processing, allows me to enable batch processing for either general journal entry or transaction journal entry. If batch processing is enabled, transaction entered in each task are grouped into individual batches. Batches entered can then be posted one at a time with the same or different posting dates or all together with of course the same posting date. If batches are not used the user is forced to have all transactions entered together in individual tasks be posted on the same date and at the same time. If you are using batch processing, the next automatically assigned batch number can be defined in the next batch number field. The next section determines how we handle journal numbers and register numbers, when they are reset, and if we are tracking deleted journals. The three options for resetting journal numbers and register numbers are never, year end, and period end. 
never reset allows register numbers to continue incrementing even after period in and year in are generated. Year in allows the number sequence of the registers to be reset after year in processing. Period in requires that the numbers of the registers be reset after each period in processing. Notice that we have a reset for journals and a reset for registers. Re journals are transactions that generate directly from the general ledger. Registers are transactions that generate from other modules. We can track deleted GL journals as well. If a journal unit number is used and deleted before being updated, this option allows me to track that journal. This applies once again specifically to general ledger journals and not registers which are generated from other modules. The final section, next allocation number, allows me to track or enter the next automatically incremented number as I process allocations. Once again, this is a subject that will be thoroughly covered later in another online lesson. Traditionally, Mass90 has out of the box supported three budgets. The original budget, the revised budget, and a user-defined budget commonly referred to for years as the budget 3. As of version 4.0, Mass90 now supports an unlimited number of budgets. Still, the original, revised, and traditional budget 3, which we have described as our next year budget, are available, but you can set up a number of other, virtually an unlimited number of other budgets. We'll create a mid-year budget, and we'll indicate that one budget is to be the default budget. Indicating a budget is a default budget implies that any time a budget is used in comparison, or as a budget is used on a report, or as a display, the original budget of the four budgets listed here is the quote-unquote default the keyword being default, meaning that any time the original budget is used, either one of the alternate budgets can be optionally used in its place. Like any other embedded grid, recently entered transactions can be reset, and transactions that existed prior to accessing this window can be deleted. Finally, we can choose the copy actual to default budget at year in, which means whichever budget is indicated as default, in this particular case the original, can be cleared after year end processing and repopulated with the actual data of the just closed year. For example, if we had an original budget for 2009, upon closing 2009, the original budget zeroes out. But prior to being prepared for 2010, the budget does not go forward with zero cleared balances, but it goes through with the previous year, in this particular case 2009, actual balances, making it easier to budget in 2010 being comparative to what actually happened in 2009. The final tab controls what terminology is used for default descriptions printed as headers on your financial reports. It's not necessary to make changes here unless you want to modify those defaults. For example, if you would like to call cost of sales section, cost of goods sold, this is where you would make that modification. If cost of sales is fine for you for the cost of sales section, then you only need to accept the default description to have cost of sales be your description for the cost of sales section. However, if you want cost of goods sold once again or something as simple as COGS, you have to indicate a change on this screen. What we've done by exploring the general ledger option tabs, main, entry, budget, and terminology is to set the parameters in which the general ledger module will function. By doing so, we make the module more acquiescent to what we need on an organization-by-organization organization basis. 
understanding the general ledger setup options, the implications of those choices made here, and the impact that those choices have on other parts of the system are central to the process of managing the MAS-90 ERP general ledger. Thanks again for your time and investment. This has been General Ledger Setup Options. I'm Charles Rogers.